of Las Vegas. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering Interconnect 2016. Brought to you by IBM. Now your hosts, John Furry and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back, everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for IBM Interconnect 2016. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube. It's our flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier. My host, Dave Vellante. Next guest is Doug Bailoff, Cube alumni, general manager of Power Systems. Good to see you again. It's great to be back on the Cube. I mean, every year you're always on giving us the update, but this year more than ever is the power of the cloud, the power of the hybrid cloud, software value propositions clearly been out there for a while. What's the update? What's the progress on power and specifically the software aspect of it? Because we kind of heard some things in the keynote today. Cheaper compute, get closer to the hardware. <laughs> I mean, Yo. I'd say inexpensive compute. But what is this all happening? What's happening? Yeah, so I mean, what a difference a year makes from the last time we got together here at, uh, at this event, uh, you know, last year was, um, I mean, we were still, still sort of progressing through the power transformation. If you remember, you know, we sort of had called a bold set of plays around power, which was one, completely go open, you know, fully embrace open source software, open standards. We created the open power foundation up to, up to hardware. And obviously power eight was coming to market, right? So here we are now a year later, we had uh, four quarters of growth in 2015 for the power business. First time we've had that in four years. So that was, you know, validation of the strategy we're on. In fact, we saw Linux on power really drive, you know, triple digit millions of revenue based on solutions, right? And, and really all around big data. So now here we are in 16. And solid revenue growth too, right? I mean, solid revenue. Nine, nine percent, right? Four, four percent uh, at constant currency for the full year. Uh, in fourth quarter, nine percent in the fourth quarter. It was eight percent in fourth okay. quarter, right? So we sort of saw an acceleration. Acceleration, out, nice. Right? Yeah. You know, so a lot of folks say, "Geez, Doug, you just got to do it again." And I'm like, "Actually, we don't. <laughs> the business is everything we did over the last two years to transform the business, the bricks and the foundation we laid, the new applications we poured." Those are done. We don't have to do those again. We need to take those now and continue to accelerate in 2016. And, and give us the update on the community, too. Is the community. Well, component. you know, Open Power now is, uh, you know, no matter what number I say, I'm sure it's wrong. It's 180 plus members now. And, you know, we were reflecting uh, back here two years ago in April of 14 when we launched this. Mm -hmm. It was like 24 guys, you know, scribbled on bar napkins. We had like Rice University signing up at the event to join. So 180 plus members later, 100 plus innovations, 30 hardware products out there. This thing really seems to have pretty good legs and it just keeps growing. And it really is all about, you know, so, so you say why. Let's bring it back to the Apple comment from this morning, right, of software getting close to the hardware to bring value to clients. You know, we all know there's a headwind in the marketplace around Moore's Law, right? The thing we've all grown up with, which is yeah. the processor you know, doubles in transistor density, doubles in performance every two years, and every other part of the system just tries to keep up. Memory I.O., that's changing. And yet we're heading into a period of the cognitive business era where that demand for compute, that demand for memory, that demand for algorithmic uh, you know, computation is becoming so intense just as the thing we've all counted on is sort of winding down. So there's got to be... It's not, it's, not, it's not a category like high-performance computing. It's native. It's table stakes. It, it is I mean, table cheap stakes. storage comment could have been more yeah. of a lines of, you know, storage is going to be infinite and, and compute is potentially infinite. Right, right. Lower cost, maybe not cheap, but that means, okay, it's still high performance. It's so, table so stakes. So I'm feeling good we've sort of caught this thing right, which is we recognize to deliver ongoing sort of Moore's Law in the new way, we needed to create a community of innovators. Acceleration is critical to this. If you think about, you know, what we're doing with accelerators, whether it be FPGAs or with our partnership with NVIDIA and Mellanox around I.O., or uh, we had a, you know, I had a, a company, uh, uh, Edico, who does genomic acceleration on, on stage with me here today. The point is in this cognitive business era where things want to run faster while Moore's Law is kind of winding down, it comes down to new ways in which that occurs. And acceleration equals cognitive for let's me. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the value because this is where it's interesting because you can say I'll pay a price yeah. for higher performance, better security, right. better design chips where you got some native yeah. capabilities. And then you got the software model where you got open source right. going on. How do you guys reconcile that? Because that is really the key dynamics going on. People want to have bulletproof boxes now because of security mm -hmm. threats, for instance. Yep. Open source is pervasive. Yep. It's a whole other generation. How do you guys talk about that? I mean, that's, is that on your business roadmap? Are you going to charge more? I mean, people will pay for a compute. 
Uh, they will, but it's all going to be, it's all going to come together in a context of price performance. So as we look at, you know, one of the things I've learned over the last year is coming in with, you know, my Linux infrastructure is better than theirs, theirs being x86, is not a great story. You got to bring it in in the solution context, right? Where that solution has a price performance value to the client. And if you can deliver better performance at a better price performance, that's a real winner. And that's what we've been able to do with so SAP So no HANA. spec wars. It's simply yeah, solution. You know, the spec is a micro benchmark, right? It sort of measures one thing and it's principally the process. So now, a lot of the hyperscale cloud companies use that as a starting point, but it's a, it's a long journey with them from where you start to when you actually get deployments underway. But you've got an inherent advantage in running analytic pipelines. I mean, that's very clear from, from the architecture. And it's interesting to hear what you're saying about Moore's Law. I was down at Spark Summit last yep. week. And all you heard about is, well, storage with flash is not the bottleneck anymore. Networking's increasing, you know, yep. dramatically. Yep. The, the, the compute is now the bottleneck. That's right. right? And so but your architecture is such that you can really drive some of those data intensive, data analytic right. applications, even if, especially if I want to bring analytics and transactions yeah. together. So talk about the business impact that you're seeing with your clients there. Yeah, you know, you know, the thing I uh, have a cli uh, client conversation with is around big data analytics, which is what everybody's been working on sort of leading up to this cognitive era. And when you can deliver a platform like Power that's got four times the number of threads versus Intel, four times the amount of I.O. bandwidth, four times the amount of memory bandwidth, you've got a, you got a system that's killer for this era of big data. And, and that has been what's been fueling sort of the power sort of resurgence we saw in 2015. And we'll continue to play forward as we get into this cognitive business era where we sort of take all that and expand it. So are people saying, okay, um, I can do things with power that I either can't do with alternatives Intel, obviously, would be yep. the big one. Uh, or they're saying, I can, I can do them for cheaper, better, faster. What's the business driver there? Yeah, it really comes down to economics at the end of the day. I mean, performance is a contributor. But again, for the, for the client looking to buy a solution, they're looking at what does it cost me to buy the solution for the performance I need, right? Performance, SLAs, all those other characteristics. But it is really price performance at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. That is the consistent conversation. If I can buy half the amount of hardware at a lower price performance, it's a winner. So, and what about the old tried and true Unix market? <laughs> you, in the earnings call, your, your executives talked about Unix. Yeah. It's not a growth market. But it's still it's still a pretty big market along, out there, yeah. right? And we're very fortunate after all the you know work we've done for years and years and years. We're number one in that market, you know, sixty seventy percent market share. But it is a slowly declining market. You know, it comes back to the principal reason: the new applications are being driven around an open source stack of software. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about some rapid application models. Swift was talked about today, right? In the open source in Swift. Yep. Good news is Swift runs on Linux on Power already. It's out in GitHub. We ported it in a weekend. You couldn't have done that with sort of a different code stack, right? That's the benefit of open source software. So the open play has really paid off for you guys, and it's beginning to build a sort of a foundation that you can, you can grow on. We have hundreds of thousands of open source packages now, uh, thousands of ISVs that are ported, you know, dozens of solutions. So, you know, there's never enough. I mean, you know, I, every time I run into a client, they're like, yeah, but you don't have this. Okay, I got it, right? We'll go work on that now, right? But we've got quite a bit out there to actually fuel the momentum going. It's got to feel good, because when, when, when you first announced that initiative, people were like, oh, it's game over, there were some desperation Let's just say there were some timing of your putting announcement. putting Baylog in charge. No, no, the <laughs> timing of his announcement was when the announcement on the x86 was. Yeah, so yeah. you had the, that over on top of you, yeah, too. Yeah. Uh, I got, well, I but that's got to feel good. I mean, you got to really... The team feels great about our progress. But again, you know, this is, this is a battle we fight against Intel every day in the marketplace, right? And we're, we're up for that battle. We know we've got the right moves underway. We're continuing to pivot the position of the power from data to cognitive, delivered in the cloud, underpinned by open. Consumers right? want so competition. Let's talk about the cloud. So cloud, obviously, is the big focus here. So I'm a cloud provider. Power 8, what's the pitch for Power 8? Because there's been some conversations here at InterConnect of uh, people switching. Yeah. Power yeah. system, power rate in particular, and it's just magic was one of the quotes someone said on one of the, uh, the sessions, customer sessions you've had. Um, what is the value proposition for the cloud providers? Yeah, so I think there's, there's a couple plays. One is, you know, we've got this tremendous on-premises asset called power today, right? You know, it could be power seven or six or five. And as we talked about, the role for that is hybrid. 
getting those clients to upgrade to power rate and then take full advantage of software, right? That could be power in software, which we started delivering in December last year. It could be x86 in software, but it's really kind of connecting those worlds together and managing it seamlessly with some of the tools we have. You know, we, uh, we IBM announced a relationship uh, with VMware in the x86 space. A lot of folks don't realize because of OpenStack, VMware vRealize orchestration now manages power. So you can bring power, X, you know, power with Linux into an x86 data center and have it be managed by all the same operational tools. That's pretty cool that's, stuff. That's very cool. Well, that's, so that that's builds good on IoT too. I mean, and, and, and you did something similar with Little Endian. I don't know, last year, a year before. That's right. That's right? right. So ha has that taken hold? I mean, is it has it? Well, so all of the applications I difference? talked about has been on the Little Endian. Yeah, that's okay. the port of Swift I mentioned a second ago. Yeah, so that's, we could do that in a weekend because Little India made it. You know, we knocked down a barrier with Little India. That was game changer. I, explain that because I'm not sure yeah. the audience knows what we're talking about. Little Indian, Big Indian. Yeah, we're talking about software it's compatibility, goofy, right? Yeah. I mean, it, but you know, it's critical. It's, it, it it's, really is critical. I mean, and it kind of goes back to you know origins of Unix and, and Intel uh, memory architectures, right? Where neither was right nor wrong; they were just different, and it was which. Which, which bit in the memory structure was high order and which was low order, which was most important, which was least important. Unix did it one way, Intel did it a different way, which made the porting either direction difficult because, as I like to say, heaven forbid you get one of those bits wrong. And that could be if you're in the banking business, you know, you're a winner and I'm a loser because of that, right? So by us going Little Indian, which is the uh, memory mapping that uh, Intel has, it made those ports from Linux on Intel to Linux on Power be completely seamless. Yeah, virtually seamless. I mean, you think, think of a Mac user doesn't even think about you know, the software compatibility. You know, we ported anymore. WebSphere, roughly 10 million lines of code. We had to change two lines. That's phenomenal. Yeah. That's phenomenal. So what's next? What's going on here for the show for you guys? Yeah. What does some of the, uh, the, the, the outlook look like? What are some yeah. of the things you're going to knock down uh, in the market with customers, the team, yeah. and uh, the benefits to those guys? You know, so I'd say for us this year, you know, it's continuing to grow, of course, as a business objective. Continuing to leverage uh, open power and Linux on power. Those are the growth engines for new applications and new revenue sources. So how do we do that? It really is continuing to sort of build out power in the hybrid and public cloud. You know, I think you'll look forward to seeing a bunch of uh, public cloud providers, in addition to software, start to deploy this year after all the you know, years of work. And at the same time around analytics, it's sort of, you know, cognitive, which is, you know, analytics, you know, with an advanced degree. <laughs> it's really bringing accelerators to the cognitive market and a lot of work around that sort of uh, portfolio of accelerators that, that uh, we're working on. I'm curious, what events do you guys go to for you go to market when you guys go out? Is it Linux Con? What events do you guys participate in? And... Yeah, I mean, we're, we're at the Spark Conference. We're at OpenStack these days. It's, it's all the places you would historically never seen power at. That's where we go now. <laughs> so you're going, you're going to go back, you're going to stay with all the IBM Kind of we go the IBM routes, but like I said, uh, all I the mean, industry uh, shows. We see IBM all Sparks the industry just... open uh, shows, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, we're in all of those. Awesome. All right, and final thought here on the show this year. Obviously, day one, we're wrapping up here. What's the vibe for the folks that are watching? What do you share out here? What's the vibe here? People who couldn't make the show, yeah. what's the vibe here this year? You know, I, I think from, uh, from an IBM perspective, I'd say the, the clarity I see, you know, first off, in our point of view of cl uh, cognitive business delivered in the cloud with an industry context, I see a lot of excitement around that clarity and how business partners, ISVs, and clients can really get benefit, business benefit from, from that clarity of purpose. You know, a year ago, I'd say a lot of folks were struggling with, well, what does cognitive mean for me? We saw three great client examples on stage today from a startup to a 100 plus year old company making money that say, on. I've got to embed yeah. cognitive into my business flows. That so is that, a testimony. It, it really is a testimony to the progress. Well, that's made. IBM's heritage. I mean, they're business partnerships, the channel, VABs, VARs, whatever you want to call it back in the day, they enable people to make money. That's right. And you That's see right. that here as a theme. And power is going to be at the heart of this cognitive era. I, I am truly believing in that. Your community, your uh, goals for the community this year, continue to grow the number, events, outreach, any kind of tweaks to that uh, I approach? think the big focus, as I mentioned, this year is, uh, you know, obviously continue to get more members, more innovation. It's really about deployment, starting to demonstrate in the public cloud power, open power is being deployed. That's a big focus. Flex your muscles a little bit. Absolutely. Doug Bailoff, General Manager, thanks for spending the time. Really appreciate you coming on theCUBE. And CUBE Madness starts uh, March 15th. Go to siliconangle.tv. We're going to set the brackets of all our, of our nominated CUBE guests, and they all go against each other in a tweet, tweet <laughs> war. Of course, everyone hacks the ballots, so it's basically a hackathon this year. Uh, <laughs> hopefully see you on the CUBE Madness. This is CUBE. We'll be right back with more coverage. All the big names coming in on the CUBE. Tomorrow we've got 
Bapiciano, we have um, CEO from GitHub, many more great people. See you tomorrow.